Now comes the real fight. What are your thoughts? Alright, let's get moving. Let's go. It's time to take back reality in Operation Therapy. Thank you for coming. It looks like I have your answer. Don't apologize. All this means is that we both have something we can't allow to fail. Let's begin. If you win, my heart will be changed. However, if I win, my reality becomes the true reality. I will overwrite all of existence with my own cognition. I'm not holding back anymore. W what the? Just as you have your own beliefs, I too have no intention of changing my plans for reality. No matter what happens to me in the end, I will fix this torturous world. That is my own rebellion. His apparel just... And I believe you called forth your power like this. Persona. No way! So Mark, he really does have a persona. I'd regret not pointing this out to you. You shouldn't mistake our powers as being equal. It's time, Azathoth. Our final battle has come. My persona guides me. Dr. Maruki. I have to do this. Incoming, guys. Get ready. 
It's finally time to face Maraki himself. The opponent is strong. Don't do anything reckless. And his the persona, Azathoth. Do the blind idiot god from the Cthulhu mythos. It's also accompanied by three tentacles, protection, assistance, and healing. There are actually two ways to win this fight. You can either take down Maraki himself, or Azathoth. Beating Azathoth is easier because Maraki has a ton of defense. So, okay then, the first step that you want to do in this fight though is to take out the three tentacles as while all of them exist, Azathoth will reduce everything to single digit damage. Come. Now, one of the tentacles is weak to physical, one of them is weak to all four of the standard elements, fire, ice, elec, and wind, and the other is weak to the four special elements, psi, nuke, light, and bless and curse. I added that once more for good measure. So I want to start things off, because Joker I think is the main one who can hit, uh, who can hit the standard uh, elemental weaknesses, so I'm going to go for Vacuum Wave first. Baton Pass is the name of the game in this fight. And yes, they do repel a whole lot of other things, but as long as you're immune to your own element, you're fine. The Persona protected him? This Persona's definitely trouble. So, we knocked down the Tentacle of Assistance. Now I can baton pass to Sumire because the Tentacle of Protection is ironically the one that's weak to physical. So she can go for Masquerade on this thing. And now I can go to Makoto to hit the nuke weakness of the third Tentacle with Atomic Flare. Now, with at least one tentacle dead, it actually does take greatly increased damage, but it will take even more if all of them are down. So I'm going to finish this baton pass chain. I normally like to go for Rebellion Blade, but I think this time I'll finish with Megadola on, just to get rid of all the tentacles. Now, the tentacles will regenerate at the start of all of Maraki's turns, so you'll definitely need to keep an eye on that. Also, Checkmate here. This is one of the few times Checkmate is useful since you have multiple targets to debilitate. And here we go, President's Insight to buff up Akechi's next attack. And you're gonna Tyrant's Will. Here's the problem I have with using Tyrant's Will on Sumire, is that usually it ends up wasted because she uses her attack to go for uh, the Tentacle instead of Maraki himself. And the Tentacle always dies to Masquerade, but uh, why not, let's go for Overkill anyway. So yeah, as you can see, uh, he's using his attack here, Raining Seeds. Now, Raining Seeds is a physical attack, which is sort of interesting. Also, he can crit people. Didn't realize he could do that. Oh, he's going for this immediately then. Okay then. Interesting. But Amplify Force is basically just a rename Concentrate. The Tentacles also have their own uh, effects. So, the Tentacle of Protection will intercept attacks. The Tentacle of Assistance will cast buffs and debuffs. Uh, actually just buffs, I think. And the Tentacle of Healing will heal. It's all pretty obvious. Uh, here is a problem though, with Sumire knocked down, I can't actually baton pass at the moment. So, I'm instead gonna focus on Konzdreni here. You'll kinda need to alternate between using your, uh, buffs, debuffs, powering up abilities, and actually going for baton pass chains. Because, for example, once Sumire is up, I can start the chain with her. Uh, in this case, let's go for... Uh, I guess you're the only one not concentrated right now. Ingenious Spirit is going to put in a lot of work here, though, between Almighty and, uh, the other stuff. Okay, Violet Strike Back time, let's go. Uh, so, Masquerade on the Tentacle Protection. The developer interview talking about Baton Pass uh, in this game and how Okumura was like, Baton Pass, uh, this, the, so how Madarame was Baton Pass Phase 1, Okumura was kind of the real trial of Baton Pass, this is the final act of Baton Pass. This fight, and I love how all the gameplay uh, that you've been building up to this entire time, pays off in this one fight. 
And what's insanely cool is that not only are you going full force with technical combos, Maruki will too. You'll see later in this fight, but Maruki will actually attempt to use ailment and technical combos against you as well. I love it when the enemies in the JRPG use the same tactics that you can. But here we freaking go. Rebellion Blade on Azathoth. Now it may look like Azathoth is going down easy, don't worry, it's far from over. Okay, that was stronger than I expected it would be. Okay, just active support. I have seen Futaba activate ultimate support in this fight before. It's kind of crazy when it does work like that. I feel like Azathoth is going to go down pretty soon, though. So I think I can probably afford to go for another one of these chains here. Sometimes using multi-target attacks here is not great because you might kill too many tentacles at once and then you'll end up ruining your chances for more baton passes because you definitely want to go for a full four chain here if you can. So let's go on healing. While I'm keeping up the loop, I can start to talk about Azathoth and its mythology. Azathoth is described, uh, as I said before, as the blind idiot god from the Cthulhu mythos. It's a mindless, shapeless entity that some believe created all of reality. It's kind of like a foil to Yaldabaoth in the sense that it's also a malevolent, ignorant uh, creator figure. Just begun. And uh, we're already entering phase two here, so I'm going to have to talk about some other stuff. But the contrast between Yaldabaoth and Azathoth is that while Yaldabaoth is actively arrogant and malevolent, Azathoth is more mindless, insane, and unknowable. So let's move on. It's still dangerous, but obliviously. Some say that all of reality is Azathoth's dream, and that if it were to ever wake up, the world would cease to exist. Be careful. Uh, what was that just now? Look at the top corner. No magic attack skills. The opponent is strong. Don't do anything. Also, this is Azathoth round 2. He has a few more tricks up his sleeve, including a bless attack that inf can inflict Dizzy, which Maruki will follow up with for Raining Siege with technical damage. The tentacles are back, but their weaknesses will actually shuffle in this phase. However, a lot of the time they'll still keep their same weaknesses and resistances, and it's recommended that you hit with as many elements as possible just so that you can get like as many things here in the log. But all of them, as I just said, they've all got the same uh, resistances and stuff. Because no magic attack skills are allowed, I'm going to use this turn to set the Mothly back up. Now might also be a good time to use Somas to recover SP. And now's also a really great time to use Charge, Concentrate, and also Checkmate. Checkmate is very good in this phase. But also, the tentacles tend to not stay alive for long, so your debuffs on them will quickly wear off while she's still concentrated. Uh, she'll, she might use that eventually, I just prefer to hit, uh... Honestly, yeah, I'm not really using her bless attacks all that much. Uh, okay, let's actually go for... Uh, I'm gonna charge you as well. Uh, Masquerade finisher of a baton pass chain onto Maruki is also quite useful. Here it is, Eternal Radiance. Now, Ketchy, please get Dodge Bless. Or Evade Bless. There we go, Evade Bless. Nice. Uh, yeah, he's weak to that. Uh, well, he's doing it again. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, keep trying until Crow doesn't dodge. But Crow did dodge. And, yep, Shapeless Guard, that's his, uh... Yeah, these are the buffs and debuffs from the tentacles. Nijima-san, everyone has the right to wish for a happy family. You don't need to keep holding back your desires. Yes, Maruki does have comments for every party member, which is pretty cool. There are even comments he has towards Joker that I think will only display if you go into the fight with Joker solo. I'll fulfill my desire for a happy family with my own power. And also with Joker because shipping. Okay then. 
So, uh, unable to batot- oh, I hate it when he does this. Okay then, yeah, so here... Ah, uh, I'm Let's probably go. gonna have to go for yet more buffs or debuffs. Oh, I suppose I can... I'd rather construct on somebody here who has no weaknesses. All right. Thank you, Ingenious Spirit. That is a 66% activation rate still, I believe. Uh, you are not concentrated anymore. Even with Spellmaster, Makoto is really running through her SP. And everybody is consecrated, so you have nothing to do with that. I can use... Oh boy, Azathoth's attack is no longer debuff, which is kind of a bad thing. So I'm gonna go for that. Like, there's honestly no real point to Maruki having his defense buff if you're just going for Azathoth, because the fight will end when Azathoth goes down anyway. You are going to... You know what, Maruki? It's time you faced our secret weapon. Old Man's Elixir! I had to use this. Nice time. Yeah, he will try and inflict fear as well. Too it's fine. And the ironic thing is that Maruki's own confidant abilities are excellent in this fight, uh, because they can cure Joker's ailments. And you're guaranteed to have them for this battle. since you're guaranteed to have Maruki at rank 10 to unlock the third semester. Okay, now this is actually kind of annoying, but I'm going to Salvation to get rid of Sumire's fear, the reason being that obviously you can't baton pass if you're afraid, so now I can finally start my chain again because he no longer has uh, that stuff going. Okay, Makoto will start things off by Atomic Clearing the Tentacle of Healing. Kind of like how Makoto is giving the commentary here with some things like that. I also love how Ella has uh, like that jumping kick in her um, attack animation and physicals. It's just really cool overall. Okay, Tentacle of Assistance needs to get assisted with lightning in its face. I'm pretty sure Joker was concentrated. Yeah, there we go. Okay, good. They're all dead. And that needs maximum possible damage from this. And let's go Rebellion Blade! Yeah, he's gonna take a few more of these, obviously. Uh, now President's Insight on... Do it on Ren again, just so that he doesn't have to waste one of his turns. Have we heard him call out, KILL THEM HEROWARD! Because that's one of my favourite uh, quotes. I think next time I might try Masquerade as the Baton Pass finisher. Because anybody can hit the physical weak one with just a regular physical attack. Thank you, Maria, for repelling that. Oh yeah, speaking of which, repelled attacks are very useful in this fight because Azathoth's uh, guiding tendril, uh, guarding tendril, whatever, but the ability he has that, that reduces damage to single digits has no effect on repelled attacks. I didn't get detox that time though, which is unfortunate. Akechi kun, don't throw away your life. If you're with him and his friends, you could begin to atone for what you've done. Enough of this high and mighty bullshit. You're pissing me off! To reference something that I think is amazing, Akechi's response is essentially, You try to atone me, but I didn't do anything wrong. I won't lose. No support skills. Okay, does that Sona. count salvation? Well, I was afraid anyway. Right then. This is potentially problematic. But weak to it's, they, they still seem to have their same weaknesses right now. So in that case, uh, I probably have some more of that salvation in the can that I can use. Strawberry Daifuku, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm doing things a tiny bit differently here. Because I'm going to go for a regular physical attack on the physical weak one first. Which killed it anyway, nice. And now you are going to take the nuclear weak one. 
It's one thing that I love about the whole baton pass mechanic in Persona 5, is that once you've mastered it, every battle feels like a puzzle, of like, how do I most efficiently defeat these enemies in a single set of actions? And a lot of fights are set up so you can do things that way. So with this, I will be able to get the Baton Pass finisher on Sumire with her Masquerade onto Azathoth. And here, also, I'm not even going to lose any HP from this either. Slightly more than uh, an Akechi finisher. Okay, let's go back for Tyrant's Will again. And this... Right, that counts as a support skill. Right. We have been affected by the gimmick of the Merciful Clergyman's fight from Persona Q. Kind of. Thankfully it doesn't completely waste your turn. Uh, items are still allowed. Uh, I mean, I could actually just go for Masquerade again. Yeah, look at the difference between a charged and non-charged attack. That 2.5 times multiplier makes a lot of difference. I will use all of our power. Okay, I think I know what he's doing here. Yeah, he's going for Tyrant Stance. What the? What are they doing? Be careful. I'm sensing a ridiculous amount of energy from his persona. Joker, you all have to guard this. <laughs> Yoshizawa-san, that pain you're suffering. It must be impossible to move on. I want to save you from that awful life. I am myself. I'll never forget that again. Ah, to unable to baton pass now of all times. Okay then. So this attack right here, uh, contrary to what Futaba believes, done. this attack is actually survivable if he's debuffed and you're buffed. So, I'm not entirely worried about this, but I also probably want to be on something with Enduring Soul just in case. This is complete overkill, but why not? So, something about Azathoth that I can talk about here. I can't even see. Is that there is a big Cthulhu theme in Maraki's Palace, and according to the developers, the reason for this is that the Cthulhu deities are all. they're all created for the purpose of fiction. They don't come from any real world religion, they were made entirely by a science fiction writer for the purposes of his own stories. Therefore, they're gods that come from entirely from the human imagination. And so that kind of fits with Maraki's reality being artificial and something he himself constructed. And there's Tyrant Chaos. Oh, okay, thank you. This can also happen. I don't even, can that happen with Rays of Control? I wonder. I know that this isn't entirely guaranteed though, because I had an earlier attempt at this fight where I did not get Butaba to block that. Uh, and yeah, Joker only took about like 350 damage, so it is survivable, but again, you want to make sure that if you're trying to not guard that, uh, Joker is defense buffed and Maraki is attack debuffed, uh, or Azathoth is attack debuffed. He wasn't at that point, and I ex suspect that's why Futaba had to block that one. But okay then, we are no longer unable to baton pass, however, as you can see, things are a little different now. Tentacles immune to nuclear this time. The enemy is strong. Let's aim Guiding is now weak to physical. The opponent is strong. Don't do anything. No wind skills. And I don't know what win what uh, assistance is weak to. That's uh, an unfortunate setback. Let's try nuclear. Okay, good. I got lucky that time. This is why, again, you want to hit them with as many elements as you can during the first phases. That's where multiple, like, having multiple potential targets is useful. I believe both of the others are weak to wind. So I might be able to ironically use uh, a Cthulhu thing against this guy. Yeah, that's weak to wind. That's also weak to wind. This will mean that I won't get a full baton pass chain, though. But yeah, let's go Vacuum Wave. 
Something else about the Cthulhu Mythos in relation to Maraki is that, uh, is that an avatar, a possible avatar and emissary of Azathoth is Nyelanthotep, who you might know if you played Persona 2. Some people have made a lot of speculation about that regarding Maraki because Nyelanthotep was a Persona who was so powerful he took control of his summoner. Some wonder if that may be the case with Azathoth and Maraki here, but I like to think that Azathoth is this powerful entirely because of Maraki's desires and resolve to change reality. Finally, his persona can't act anymore. Now's your shot, Joker. This is what happens if you take out Azathoth, Maraki will automatically be reduced to 1 HP. But uh Futaba, you said now's our shot, right? Let's go! Yeah, that doesn't work on him, I just wanted to show that off. <laughs> okay then, uh... Yeah, let's just punch him. And that's fight over. Overall, I love that fight. I think it's a much better final battle than Yaldabaoth, just personally. Did I... fail? Is that...? It's Maruki's treasure. Remember how I said to remember one of those images from the psych test? Yeah, that person holding a torch for steal my own heart to heal? That was foreshadowing Maruki's treasure. What is it though? A torch? Torch is a light to guide people. It may symbolize his perception of himself as the guide for the entire world. We're here to change his heart, aren't we? Go on. Take it. So... This is it. This place is collapsing! We'd better take our leave. For me. I'm sorry. I couldn't. No, I... I can still... Joker, look out! Damn it! We gotta book it! Guys, jump in! Escaping a crumbling palace one last time. And now you can finally see there's a city in the background of Maruki's palace. I'm so glad she's driving in Oharu. That was close. Dr. Marky. This has gone too far past changing someone's heart. Is he even still alive? Looks like that isn't a concern. Sorry, but I won't admit defeat just yet. I'm sorry. You know I can't do that. I've been chosen by the world itself. Granting this wish is my responsibility. The last time somebody said something like that, they were Shido. None of the other targets even thought to try that.
No, you can't be serious. Maruki, he's done it. He evolved his persona. Such strength of will. If it is for everyone's happiness, I don't care what happens to me. Don't resist. Accept it. With my power. No. With mine and Adam Cadmon's together, our reality is nigh! Persona guides me. Refuse to let it end like this. Adam Cadmon, guide us all to our ideal reality. You're wrong! Yeah, we refuse to let it end any other way, too. Persona! That should do. So this is Maraki with Adam Cadmon. I love the concept of a Persona user who uses like the same power as us and just has that kind of bond with their own Persona being the final boss. I just think that's insanely cool. But Adam Cadmon, Adam Cadmon is, uh, let's just say a little hard to really describe. It's, uh, it's a very complicated thing. It's less of a relation to the biblical Adam and more a world in its own right. It's a personification of the first world in the Kabbalah that emerged uh, from God's infinite light during creation. In the four letters YHVH that make up his name, Adam Kadmon represents an alternate pronunciation of the first letter, the Y. In Gnosticism, Adam Kadmon is pure mind. 
are emanating from God and not darkened by contact with earthly matter. It means primordial man. Some see it as like a heavenly prototype of the earthly Adam, but it's really much more than that. It's its own essential thing. And I, again, I, I need to look more into Kabbalah to figure out more about this because it's really hard to wrap your head around conceptually. My reality is right before my eyes. I'm sorry. I said I didn't care what happened to me. But I guess... I wasn't committed to my words. You too, huh? Kurosenpai, what are you... Can you tell? You think the same thing, don't you? Of course you do. After all... No, you can't! We hesitate right now. We die. I'm all yours. Use me however you want. Now, show us the reality. The reality we wish for. <laughs> to run. We're going to beat you and go back to our own reality. That's the spirit. Now let's finish this. I mean, it's just a persona after all. A really, really big one, the size of a skyscraper. Like the one that we used to one-shot a god. Oh, okay, wait, that's not good. Yeah, here it is, Adam Cadmon, and uh, I let that the full loop of the song play before. Uh, but that song is called Throw Away Your Mask, and it is essentially Maruki's villain song. Thank you so much. Hmm. Persona. Like, all of the Lin songs in general are... The ones that she made after the original game, too, are all really great. Like, she's got some really good ones in Strikers, too. And a lot of them are very thematically related to certain characters in the game, sometimes in ways you may not expect. This one, though, is a little more obvious. If, you, if you've seen the lyrics that I was showing on screen, it's pretty clear this song is from Maruki's perspective about how desperately he wants us to accept his reality. Oh no, he's someone Adam Cadmon in attack mode. Well, uh, this looks really, really bad, but I'm gonna just stand here and use Raul. I think it's kind of fitting that I use Raul for the, for the end here. That's a lot of damage, but it doesn't really seem like it's making a whole lot of impact. How about Mega Dolon from Makoto? Uh, even less. Okay. How about Rebellion Blade on your teeth? Yes, 
And Masquerade. I cannot fail. I must not fail you all. And we can't fail you. But Maraki thinks he's saving us and we're only doing this to save him. Hang in there, huh? Well, let's rely on the power of faith once more. It's fitting that we're using Sumire's persona at the end here. But Futaba has to be the hero, so let's just hold out until she gets there. Show me your true form. Checkmate. up everything else I dedicated all that I have to this but I still why you mean I'm running away from it all we we're trying to help everyone else with their traumas but the one who needed help most was you <laughs> true that I turned my back on the original reality. But where's the harm in that? When it grows to be too much, too painful, 
Every person deserves to escape that! <sighs> In all honesty, it's best for a person's growth when they tackle their own hardships. But reality doesn't always make that so feasible! I do think he has a point here. No matter how much you try, or work for so long, the smallest injustice can wipe it all out, leave you with nothing! Don't you, of all people, understand that? Well, yeah, but we came out stronger. All of us. You know, none of us asked to have abusive parental figures, be sexually harassed, but those events happened and we came back from them stronger. You keep going. You know, there probably are plenty of people who'd ultimately benefit from your reality. But what about the people who want to take on the world themselves? How's it right to rob them of their opportunities? I don't think what you're saying is wrong either, Dr. Maruki. Some people want to run from their pain and cling to some other version of reality, like I used to. But the knowledge I gained through that pain and my desire to move on, those are even more precious to me. And I won't let anyone take them from me again. Yoshizawa-san. So you truly don't want it, huh? Looks like I'm totally finished. trapped as well huh? is there any way everyone get over here hurry <laughs> monotan what are you <sighs> this is no time to act stop whoever Now or never. I have to fly! <laughs> you have to believe you can fly! Believe, Mona! I mean, they didn't make a joke all the way back in Kaneshiro's Palace about how... Joker go. Don't worry. <laughs> really, Maraki. <laughs> Sorry to cut your flight short like that. 
This place is done for. Along with the entire reality I dreamed of. I... have lost. Even if I were to try that fight over, I'm sure I'd only lose again. So I know, this is going to sound pretty stupid. I've been holding this all in for so long, just hiding it from myself. So, please, help me kill every last one of my regrets. You're the only one I can ask to help me with this. It's part of our deal. The disappearance of my palace, of the entire metaverse, is drawing near. Seems like neither of us can summon our personas anymore. Let's begin. Jose was right. Sometimes you just have to vent. I gave up everything! Everything! So why? where no one suffers done. I get it now. All thanks to you. I'm done. Please, let go of my hand. Your eyes are as bright and honest as ever. You keep your head up no matter what. I must have always been afraid. Afraid you and I wouldn't wish for the same reality. Magnificent. We have indeed witnessed your decision. Not only have you taken back mankind's future for itself, 
but you've also re-established our reason for existence. Maruki's reality would have erased the Velvet Room, and that's a terrifying thought. While reality had been wholly distorted, your actions have guided it back towards what it ought to be. That is correct. Time itself cannot be rewound, but every past event will revert to the event that should have occurred instead. I'll ask you once more. I'd like for you to turn yourself into the police, of your own accord. I will carve my own path for myself. I refuse to accept a reality concocted by someone else. Stuck under their control for the rest of my days. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, there's two things we could ask about here, but what about this? Everything will return to how it should be. Everything. There are no exceptions. Have your regrets begun? I see. Choosing such a path must not have been easy for you. For that, you have our utmost respect and gratitude. 